The SV Steelhead is operated by the Michigan DNR out of the Charlevoix Fisheries Research Station. The trawler has been used for scientific sampling of Lake Michigan's fisheries and deepwater habitats since 1968. Nature Change joined the crew for a day of sampling during this spring's annual lakewide fisheries assessment. The sampling process keeps the crew busy on the water for weeks. On this day, we motored out of the Leland Harbor at 6 a.m. Here's Assistant Boat Captain Nathan Scope. When we show up to a port, we have predetermined distances from the port. We go north and south. We set predetermined depths at 30, 50, 100, and 100 feet. Um, we set uh, 8,000 feet of graded mesh gill net. Um, the graded mesh is to catch anywhere from small fish to big fish. So when we show up, we set the net. Um, we deploy it overnight. The next morning, we go and retrieve the net, collect all the fish out, separate them by the mesh size that they were, that they were caught in. Um, there's eight nets, so as we lift one, a net has to go up. Um, the net will come back, as well as all the fish that were captured in the net. They'll have to get um, an ID, ID tag placed in them, and then we ice all the fish down to preserve them and before we can, until we can work them up. This annual lake-wide sampling plays a key role in understanding the fisheries of Lake Michigan. Here's biologist Jory Jonas. She's responsible for interpreting much of the data brought back by the steelhead and its crew. You know, it's expensive to run research vessels, and having these long-term data sets, it's, it's something you invest in and you contribute to and you try to maintain. There's a lot of variance, a lot of noise in field sampling. So really what we're good at measuring are large-scale shifts. So when we send the, them out on these crews, we're doing two things. We're, we're getting a relative index of abundance. So we're putting a, a set of nets out there that have very specific configurations with multi-mesh sizes. The length of the net and the duration of the set are all synchronized. And all the other studies around the lake, the other states, are doing a similar thing. So that way, when we get together at the end of the year with these organizations, we can know that we're comparing apples and apples. And then the other thing we do is we collect biological data. Processing fish um, begins here in the lab. Um, everything gets entered directly in the database. So uh, fish comes in, everything gets a length and a weight. And uh, for certain species, we have certain quotas, for, in particular for whitefish and trout and bourbon and perch. The data gathered helps biologists determine fish growth and population age structures. Ultimately, it helps determine how the various populations are doing and the causes of mortality. Um, I mentioned that we have the uh, different um, organizations around the lake. You know, really, any one of us sampling a section of the lake is not as informative as having the whole lake sampled in a similar way. Each year, this sampling data is used by fishery managers to make science-based decisions about fishing limits, habitat improvement, and fish stocking. But these decisions are never simple. The introduction of non-native or exotic species has dramatically changed the Lake Michigan ecosystem more than once. The introduction of lampreys and the Atlantic herring called alewife resulted in huge changes to the fisheries in the 1950s and 60s. Lampreys and overfishing nearly wiped out the native lake trout, and Pacific salmon were introduced to control the exploding alewife population, ultimately producing a whole new fishery. Over the last 25 years or so, the arrival of zebra mussels and the round goby from Eurasia, along with many other non-native plants and animals, have once again completely changed conditions for fisheries managers. There's winners and losers when you have this level of change going on. So some things are doing better, some are doing worse. Uh, since the round gobies have come in, um, you virtually do not see sculpin in the near shore zone in Lake Michigan. As widely reported, the alewife population has declined dramatically, as have populations of salmon. However, lake trout appear to be doing much better. When I started my job and was given the role of, of studying lake trout and understanding their population um, dynamics, I was a, the third generation of scientists that had been participating, trying to understand lake trout failures in Lake Michigan, why they were virtually extirpated and why we've been una unable to restore those populations. And I feel like we're in the 
process of watching a recovery right now and that we're very close to having achieved that, especially in southern Lake Michigan. Um, some people think that it's a, a low alewife abundance and that the, there's no more predation on young fish. Others um, believe that it's because of a reproductive uh, deficiency had been alleviated by round goby in the diet. So there was this uh, process called early mortality syndrome that occurs when you're low in vitamin B or thiamine. And um, it would seem that that had a tremendous impact on the ability of lake trout to produce young in Lake Michigan. And now that the round goby are here, they're alleviating that thiamine deficiency and you actually have successful reproduction occurring where you didn't before. Now, um, it's also possible that it's both. Nothing is completely good or bad. Um, what I would say is that when you have invasive species, you're setting yourself up for some pretty dramatic changes. And those are generally not things that people who make a living off the resource want to see. Um, we've been in wide swings, I would argue, in Lake Michigan right now because of invasive species. And uh, to have that level of swing is not a desirable outcome. However, to some extent, once they're here, you've got to watch and learn and figure out how you're going to manage the new system. Unfortunately, the exploding populations of quagga mussels is causing still more disruption and change in the Lake Michigan ecosystem. We're getting another reboot with the quagga mussels out here. There, there's just another boom going on and, and I don't know where it's going to land. We're not managing for these introductions. We're managing despite them. And until someone is able to sever the connection to bring uh, with shipping and other factors that are bringing these invasive species in, we're going to be in this game of responding and trying to understand after the fact. And that's a horrible position to be in as a manager. Mm -hmm.